Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, first, I want to give a little preview. <clears throat> I got new XP Rider shirts being made. Uh, I've got them in yellow logo and red logo. You can get them on a black or uh, yellow shirt if you want. Uh, check them out on the website. A link will be in the description if you're interested in a XP Rider shirt or an XP Riders uh, sticker uh, for your ski or your vehicle. Uh, check them out. Um, today we're going to be working on this 1996 GSI. I'm very excited for this project. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a scratchy throat. Very excited for this project. This is my first GS model series that I've worked on, or not worked on, that I've owned. I've worked on several others, um, GS uh, style skis, but this is the first one I've owned. And this is the GSI with the 717cc engine. Um, Pick this one up. The ski, super cheap from a guy uh, not too far from here. Uh, basically paid 120 bucks for this whole ski. It is missing a few things, and I believe it needs a top end. It's missing a jug, it's missing exhaust, and a few other random small things, but all that I can get pretty, pretty easy. I have a pile of extra parts for that. Um, but this one needs a top end. The crank spins freely. Um, I was told that one of the jugs had got water in it and froze over and cracked. That's another reason why you don't want to trust that water draining system on the back of the jugs, that gravity water draining system that's supposed to drain the water out so you don't have to worry about it freezing because it's not 100% reliable. You always want to run antifreeze, RV antifreeze, marine antifreeze through these for the winter if you live in a cold climate like here in Minnesota, uh, that'll help prevent that any water in there freezing and cracking and pro causing problems. Um, because you don't want cracked jugs or anything else to be cracking that shouldn't be cracked. Um, so I picked this up pretty cheap. Um, it needs a good washing. It needs a hood scoop. It needs all the other stuff I mentioned. Um, but overall, it's in pretty good shape. It's got a few nicks in the gel coat. Nothing that, we, that I can't fix. Um, but let's give it a walk around and I'll show you the inside and out of this, uh, of this ski. So we do have some aftermarket mats already on here, but they're peeling up. So we're going to get these off later. We may have to fill the holes. It looks like someone might've tried filling the holes with some silicone or something, but we'll see more what we have to do with that later once we get those off. I don't think this seat is original. I think someone's recovered this seat. Um, it's got some mold and mildew issues. It's in nice condition otherwise, but we'll see how good we can get it to clean up with some mold and mildew remover and some other cleaners. Um, it does have aftermarket G-Force R&D um, sponsons, which I've never really seen aftermarket sponsons on a GS series before. So that's new. We got a, that can probably come out, but we have a few other little nicks in it. Nothing big. We've got some stress cracking in the gel coat. Nothing major. Here's the stress cracking in the gel coat right along here. And this is the bigger boo-boo right here. Once I get the decals off, I can fill that in and sand it smooth and we'll slap new decals over it and it'll look good as new. But let's get the seat off. It uh, looks like it's got a sticker from Unique Motorsports 6570072. I'm not sure if that's in Minnesota or where that would be allocated. I'm going to have to do some research to see where they're out of or even if they're still around. Let's get this seat off of here. Okay, we'll remove our her box funnel. So the pistons do move. She's she moves freely. She looks good. Just this jug was frozen. He didn't keep it. So I don't have that jug. So but we're gonna pull this engine out and we'll redo a top end. We'll have that probably have uh that crank inspected just to make sure 
And uh, this one does have a single carb. The carb is up in the front box. Um, and of course, like always, oil tank is full. So I got a chore to drain that oil tank. And it's a two piece. So I'll probably pull it off and I'll weld that seam up to prevent leaking. We have a VTS. The boot's ripped, but the motor's in good shape. Hopefully the unit works. And we have some electrical stuff here. Looks like the end caps for these popped out. Probably need re-gluing. Re-glue that or something. Um, like I said, we don't have our exhaust pipe or the manifold. So we're missing that. And I think we're missing our intake stuff for the air box and stuff too so i'll have to order all that probably used off ebay or see if my buddy at nick carnes at west side of power sports and Wizetta can help me out with the air box stuff i've got extra pipes i just have to figure out if this is a tune pipe or or a lower split pipe. Just figure out which one this originally had um before and we'll try to get back to stock as originally as we can <sighs> Open up the hood here. There's our carb. So they don't have carbs or bolts or any of that stuff. So I gotta source all that. There's our key, and we do have our exhaust fitting there, but it's dirty. And it looks like it's got gray gas lines in some spots on the on the baffle i can't really set i really tell we'll get up in here looks like some of them might have been replaced so you got black ass lines down here going to the carb so those were replaced at least but we'll replace these oil lines and the filter, of course, and of course, these original oil injection lines. They're soft, they're not broken yet, but they need to be replaced while we have the engine out. So, the plan is to get the engine out. We'll first get the oil tank um, pump dry and then um, get that shaft disconnected. May remove the pump first and then get that engine out of there. Then we'll wash the heat, wash the ski off inside and out. Strip, see what we can do to strip these mats off and wash it as well. And just get it good and clean. So right now I've got it parked next to the house. My yard is full. I got skis everywhere. There are the twin 95 800s there that I still gotta work on. Um, so yeah, lots of skis. Two more up front, another 787 uh, GS or GTX 787 on the side. So a lot of skis, a lot of projects, but basically I picked this thing up for 120 bucks, guys. You can't beat that. There's our pump down there. So it's got trim. I know some of these GSs didn't have trim. I'm surprised this GSI with the 717 has the trim. Maybe it was just the GS that didn't have the trim. I'm not very familiar with all the GS models. I know the I's the 717 for sure. And then the X's were either 787 and then some years they were the 951. So I'm more of an XP guy and the GTI, the three seaters. So this is my first GS series ski. And this is a good, it's a good two-person ski. It's a good one person. It's still fun to ride, uh, ride around, whip around with uh, one person, but it's a little more stable than the XP, the smaller XP hull, uh, which are really tippy. So this is a little more stable and a little better that, uh, with two people than the XPs. These, <coughs> these XPs, are, they still call them a two-up, but you really can't ride them two-up. They're basically a one-person ski. And this is another project. I washed it out yesterday. We got to remove the mats off of it. And this is just going to get cleaned up. And I'm hoping one day 
uh, right now my nine-year-old daughter hopefully one day this will be her ski um it'll be her ski project to build up but i just want to get it stripped and kind of get it ready but today's focus is going to be this gs so let's get started i'm going to get uh things ready and start pumping out that oil tank Okay, so I've got a jug here left over. This is the uh, one of the RV marine antifreezes I use. It's pink. This is empty one. Empty jug I use for retaining oil. Use this hand pump here. You can get it at most auto parts stores. Got this one at Menard, just like eight bucks, really cheap. Um, they don't seem to last very long, especially if you're using gas. I guess the O-rings in them get eaten up and they just lose suction. So what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to disconnect the, this return line. We got the return line up here and it goes up to the tank up there. I'm going to disconnect that line and then shove my hose into that line and suck as much oil out as I can. And then I'll just bring it all through the engine and out. It's a slow process, but it works. So getting up in there to that <clears throat> hose clamp. They put hose clamps on these. I don't know why. <laughs> Zip tie will be good just enough. So it's just a return line, overflow line. It's not used that much. So just stick our line in there. Hopefully this pump works. Otherwise, I may have to see if I have a, another way to get oil out. Now it seems to want to pump better now. But this is pretty as simple as it is. We'll just pump that out. And then we'll have a little bit left in the feed line and the um, oil injection line and filter to get out. But this is the green two-stroke oil. I don't know what brand they used, but <clears throat> normally I see people using the blue stuff from Walmart. I prefer in these 717 engines with the non-raves, I like to use the uh, BRP XPS 2T, the two-stroke oil, the mineral oil. Uh, currently comes in the white jug or black jug with white label. So it's a mineral oil. It's a little cheaper than the full synthetic. You don't need the full synthetic for these non-rave engines. For the rave engines like the 787 and 951, you want the full synthetic. You can run the full synthetic in here if you have other skis. If you want, if you have other multiple skis, I'll run that. And you have like one 720, you can run it in it, no problem. It's just kind of overkill spending a little bit more money than you don't more money than you need <clears throat> but like me i got all my skis except for my wife's 96 gti that's the only 717 i have so that's the only one that i need the two, the mineral oil for so i could just run the other stuff in it but <laughs> i don't I prefer just to keep two types of oil available because I always have the mineral oil available anyway for all these other skis I'm working on. 
And usually there's about a gallon of oil, maybe a gallon and a half or so of oil between the tank and the engine. So So I'll continue to get this out and then we'll um, disconnect those lines. We'll disconnect the lines down here and then we'll get ready to get this, uh, the pump off and then the engine out. Okay guys, so we got 99% of the oil out. Got my lines disconnected. I got to disconnect the starter here. That's going to be a 10. I already took off the clamp here for the drive shaft. And we got to take off the ground. That's going to be a 13. And then we're going to tackle removing the pump. So I'll get this stuff off. And I will record myself removing the pump just for uh for uh, learning purposes so you guys can learn how to do that i know some of you have already seen it in my other videos but we'll do it again so i'm gonna get this stuff started and then we'll uh start on that pump okay so uh, now to remove this pump hopefully you can see we're going to need to remove the trim rod mount and the steering. And that should be an eight or it might be a Phillips depending on what they used, but whatever you have in your situation, it's not rocket science to take off. And I like to stick the screw back in so I don't lose it. Now that's a 10. There we go, so that's parts done. This rod here is a 10 as well. We'll go ahead and just disconnect that from the trim. There, I'll get that nut when I get to get the pump out. Oh, there it is. Take our washers and nuts and put them back in now i'm going to paint this this is why i took this off otherwise you could just undo it from up here and just leave it together but i'm going to get this painted so now we need our 13s for that for the nozzle And your nozzle should come off. Now you got two O-rings that should be right here. They're crusty, but we'll go replace those. And there's our cone with our oil in it. So we'll disassemble this later and get that probably powder coated. <clears throat> so now I have one other tool I forgot to get was my 17s for those and my ratchet strap. We'll look in now, look down in there and Really hard to see without light, but 
wear ring looks good, but we're going to replace it anyway. So we got to remove these 17 four bolts. And then this pump should come off pretty easily. That's all it is to it. Now up in here, as you can see, we have a VTS boot that has the metal clamps on it. And this VTS boot is destroyed. It's falling apart. So that's what lets water in and destroys your VTS housing unit. So we're going to get in here and can't quite turn that. Uh, I got a special tool that works great for that. I don't know if I can get in there with, with this, but I'll go grab that tool. I'll pause the video. <clears throat> okay, it's one of these little gadgets. Basically, it's like a ratcheting head. They make them in different drives. They work pretty great for getting into tight spots. Or you can't fit a long hand wrench. Just a little more. Yep. That boot is just sh shred, I tell you. Yep, that boot is shredded, I tell you. Oh, here we go. Oh. So that's off. The new boots come with plastic clamps. So you don't have to worry about the metal destroying them. Okay, so now we'll get our 17 with an extension. See how easy this one comes off. Yep, I like these with these base plates. There's no silicone needed to pry them off. Unlike on the 96 XPs and other X4s where you don't have this plastic base. So these come off a lot easier. Get all of our washers and lock washers off. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at all that weeds. We'll get that off. But there's our pump. And as you can see, the impeller doesn't look in too bad shape. We got a little gap on this OEM wearing, but I like to rebuild them with new Durlin, Delrin air wear rings from OSD Marine. So this will get probably a new cone too. We'll open this up this cone and see what model cone this is. See if it's the anti-rattle that has the spring or not. Um, if it isn't, then we'll replace it. But we'll get a new, uh, we'll get a new wear ring in there and fresh oil for sure. So... But yeah, that's all it is to take off the pumps on this GSI. That was super simple. I'm going to put our washers back. And our lock washers. And then our nuts.
Now, because this one's got this spacer, basically you've got these O-rings right here that butt up to it. On the other models, like the XPs, uh, the 96 XPs and those, because you don't have this, you actually have the nipples that stick out of these into the hull. Um, so then you have to unhook your hoses in there. On this model, you don't have to do that. You don't have to unhook your hoses because you, they, they just made up to each other here, which is really convenient. And as you can see, this plastic plate here, this pump space, it is what's silicone to it. And then, uh, so your pump just sits right here. Now they don't have a, normally they have a seal here, a neoprene rubber seal, which is easy to remove. This one doesn't have that. So whoever did this last didn't put that in. Um, but very simple to remove on these with the spacer. So you don't have to worry about any silicone really. It's a big plus. So the pump is off. Our VTS is off. We're going to pull our VTS. I got a special tool for the VTS nut here. I'll grab that. We'll get the VTS out as well. And then we will um, start pulling that engine. So let's get that done. Okay, so for this nut on the back of the trim here, I believe this is either inch and a quarter or inch and a half pipe. And what you do is you heat up the end with a torch or a heat gun and you push it onto the nut and let it cool. So then it molds to the size of your nut. Then you can drill out a hole here to stick a screwdriver through. You can stick a screwdriver through to give you some leverage for turning it. Uh, but most of the time you get them off by hand or a little, little elbow power. And there you go. Hopefully you guys can see that. You know, Put it back on and ah, there we go. Now there's a gasket back here. No, oh, this one's all torn up. I'll have to see if I can get a replacement for that. A little rubber gasket o ring. But now we can undo. It's uh, electrical wiring, harness, and then the uh, trim will come right out. I'll show you guys that. So I will be taking off the, the mount here, but you don't need to do that um, for this purpose. But basically the unit will come out just like that. And you have to disconnect your your wire harness but we want to take that off because we're going to be replacing these lines and that makes it easier to re to replace these lines with that off and help that way we can clean up pressure wash everything behind it so next we're going to pull that drive shaft out i gotta get this uh carbon seal off and we'll pull that drive shaft out should have done that before I pulled the pump. I wasn't thinking. Um, and then we'll undo our four bolts for our engine and pull the engine out. Okay, so basically you push this up forward, expose this O-ring or there's a groove right there and this O-ring sits inside that groove. So now that drive shaft should come right out. There we go. And there's that groove. Look at all that seaweed. We'll get that cut off. And then there is our hat and our O ring. So the next is to remove that engine. These four bolts will be 13s. We'll get an extension on there and we'll get those off.
Okay. I got my 13 with an own extension and we'll get these bolts out. If you have any spacers or shims under the engine mount, you want to remember mark where those go. This looks looks like it's got one on the one on each of the rear, so being kind of a pain to get to there we go okie dokie make sure she's free yep I got this uh, stator wire I gotta undo here and it looks like there's a ground wire That's a 10. <clears throat> okay. So that's all undone. Now we're ready to man lift this son of a gun out of here. I'm gonna lift it out and I'm gonna set it over here on the ground. <clears throat> Make sure everything is connected, They're disconnected. Don't want to get halfway up and then feel it's being caught somewhere. So, I got the steering cable in the way. Stupid hose. Okay, try again. Ooh. There we go, she is out. We got these shims. We'll put the bolts back in and have those shims in spot so we know remember where they go. Oh, oh. So engine is out. Now it's time to pull that oil tank, we'll undo the straps, pull that oil tank out. It's pretty simple. And we'll get ready to pick some of the parts out of here. We're going to get some of that oil out there. And then we will give it a good pressure washing. I got to get my pressure washer and all that stuff out. So <clears throat> so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This first video of this 96 GSI project that we're going to be working on. Um, so we accomplished. We got the oil drain, oil pumped out. We got the drive shaft disconnected. We got the pump out, the VTS out, got the drive shaft out, and got the engine out. Got everything disconnected from the engine, of course. Um, so I'm not going to record some of these other stuff that I'm working on. Um, you don't really need to see me pressure wash it all out and and, and all that grimy stuff. Um, so the next video, it'll be all cleaned up. And um, we'll probably work on the carb. I don't know. We'll see what we can do. We want to rebuild the carb tear apart that pump, get a new wiring and stuff in it, new cone, rebuild that pump, get those parts painted. Um, and then we'll decide on what we're gonna do with this engine. Um, needs a top end, hopefully the bottom is still good, the crank and stuff is still good. So it needs a top end for sure. Um, so, and then we'll get, it all, get all that done, get it cleaned up, probably throw some fresh paint on the engine and the exhaust pipe. I did remove the exhaust pipe, I didn't record that. Um, but that's sitting over there, uh, not the exhaust pipe, but the, the water box, the water box. I pulled the water box out. So 
we'll get the rest of these parts out and I'll get it cleaned up. Until then, you guys have a good one and I will see you in the next video. And check out OSD Marine for any of your parts and uh, Westside Power Sports. Hit up Nick Carnes for any used parts and other stuff you, stuff you might need. Um, they're my go-to guys for parts on these. And uh, Peter Rusinski at Fox Valley Power Sports for his rebuilt engines and other uh, engine top par end parts and any other rebuild parts you may need. Um, those, are the guy those are the three guys that are kind of my go-to guys. So until the next video, guys, see you then. Peace out. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks.